So Lightroom has a new dirty secret. Oh, Adobe, you dirty girl. No, it's, it's not really dirty. And you've probably heard about this new feature from cooler YouTubers than me. Or maybe you just saw it when you updated. And that is that in the AI masks, there is a new landscape mode that lets you select landscape related features. Now using it is pretty straightforward, but what I'm going to show you today is why it's kind of a game changer in the way we edit and not just for landscapes, for portraits, for streets, everything, because the name's a little misleading. More importantly, with this growing selection of Lightroom masks that consistently seems to be outpacing Capture One, it's also getting a little complicated. There's a lot of masks and you add all these masks and then if you have to tweak all these masks, well, at some point, why not just go into Photoshop and just manually do layers? I'm gonna show you how to solve that as well, although there are times still that you should be going into Photoshop. But what we're going to look at today is what no one's talking about, because most of the videos on these masks are very skin deep, and I am always trying to hack Lightroom and Photoshop to do things faster and crazier. Now, just like the other masks, you can select which landscape features you want. It's also worth noting if we go to a different photo and do this, that you're gonna see it's actually going to give you different mask features options. So if you notice here, this one has mountains and artificial ground and water, whereas the one we started on has architecture and artificial ground. In a minute, I will show you how I'm doing all those all at once, but let's look for a second at what we can do with these and why they're actually really useful. You know, I'm not a big fan of AI generation and generative fill and all that kind of stuff. I want images to be real in this AI world, but making selections with AI is very different. So for example, if we take the landscape and select those features and I make all the masks for it, here's the sky. Let's pull down the highlights and push up the whites. And now let's take the vegetation and lift the shadows on that a little bit. And let's go down here and add some texture into the ve vegetation. Maybe on the natural ground areas, I want to do a little bit of dehazing and mix that up a little bit differently. So this is really cool because in the past, we kind of had to do foreground, background, sky, and kind of kludge it together. Now we can take all these landscape elements and work on our landscapes and our street and things like that because it's not just landscape features that it's allowing us to select. But here's where it gets magical. We can also combine this with portraits. All right, but before we get to the portrait, let's talk about the coolest way to combine these that also doesn't bog everything down as bad because you can do it at the end when you're ready. Now, the key with all this that I've done is I've saved all these masks into a speed mask. Now, some of you might use my elegant speed masks and I will put a link to those in the comments. And I was actually just working on this update, which you'll see soon. You can make these yourself. What happens when you save all of these into a single develop preset is you do one click and it applies all the masks that you want with all their settings integrated. So you're not doing this bog down of not only making the masks, but then having to go through and individually do each one. Notice here, this one has an exclamation mark it actually applied the natural ground settings that I put in there as well. It's just not showing anything because it didn't see any natural ground in the scene, but you can put all those masks into a single preset. And the beauty of doing it this way is you can also turn it up and down. You don't have to be using my elegance masks, but if you want to be efficient with masks, especially as big and bloated as they're getting and as many as there are, you absolutely need to be saving your mask combos as speed masks. And of course, at any time you can save or update any combination of masks by just going in and saving only the mask settings and not the other develop settings. This can be really powerful, whether it's streets or landscapes or portraits or any combination, because you can build up these masks. But now let's look at why the landscape masks in particular are really good for portraits. Let's take this here. This is from the recent Hacienda session that I just uploaded a video on last week. There's a lot of dynamic range happening I went with a natural HDR preset and our process is pretty good, but obviously we need some separation. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Elegant Speed Masks and go to the Portrait AI Full Classic. Now you could use your own variant of this, you can do it manually, whatever you like, but this is applying a complete range of masks from eyes to skin to face, background, everything. Okay, but here's where it all starts to get a little crazy. Because if you look at this photo, we've applied a main process preset, right? And by the way, you can try natural HDR presets. I'll put a link to the free sampler pack of those in the comments as well. We've put a mass combination on here. And you can see if we reset this, we've come a long way in just a few clicks. But also if you look here on the specifically portrait type presets, 
the clarity, the texture, things tend to be pulled down. And then you get in and you do a skin mask and you tend to do it even more because you want everything to be kind of soft and that not harsh digital feeling in a portrait. But there's a lot of detail and it's not bad, but if you look at the grass and the texture of the stones and things like that, you can see that we've taken a lot of detail out of those by pulling the clarity and doing all these background masks and trying to soften everything and give our subject that 3D pop. So let's make this even cooler. Let's add more masks and do the landscape. And let's do sky, vegetation, and artificial ground and make three separate masks. Now the sky we've had before, it's kind of a no-brainer, but I can pull the highlights, make it a little bit warmer, just kind of make it fit the whole theme better. I do other videos where we're talking more about recovering blown out skies. Remember, we're on a raw file, so everything's non-destructive. If we pull down the clarity in one and then push it back up in another area, that's just fine. So we can select the vegetation, for example, which is the grass and all its related accoutrements, and we can turn the texture back up, for example, but we might also darken it a little bit to make it a little bit more dramatic and kind of black so that the subject is separated. Now, in a landscape, we would not do the vegetation this way. The power of this is we can do a custom set specifically for portraits, because in a portrait, yes, you want the beautiful scene, but everything else should be supporting cast. Everything else should kind of fall away and make your subject a star. Now, we can take artificial ground, too, so it's actually noting, hey, there's a stone path here, and we could do the same on that. I could up the clarity, for example, of the stone path so it feels a little more stone-like. I could also add a little highlight and contrast control specifically to that, but all at the same time while retaining strong detail in those stones. We've actually subdued the stone more, but at the same time, we've let it retain more natural detail. You obviously do not want to do all of this every time and set all of these up. It would be ridiculous. But I can save all of these masks into a preset. Here is the master combo, which includes all of these. Now, as I mentioned, the moment you apply this as a develop preset, you can turn them all up or down independently. And so you can decide how far, how intense you want to go with this look, which is wild. The other thing to remember is that if you apply a preset that has masks saved in it and it has the same names, it will update those layers. Now, just so we can see this in action, I've deleted all the masks we just made. No worries, because they were saved over here in my master combo preset that I saved. So I'm just going to click this, and there we are, all the masks applied. So now we're getting this immense control, not just of texture and color and tone, but of all of them combined. So let's recap this. First of all, yes, we all know there's these new landscape masks, but the cool thing is they can independently select different elements of the landscape depending on what it sees in the photo, but you can have all those set up, saved, into a speed mask. Two, you can combine these with all of the portrait masking features that we've already been using, allowing you to, for example, tone down a background and separate the model and soften the skin, but then individually control things like sky and water and details within a portrait. So obviously I'm going to be refining all these combos together in the best possible way I can find because I'm a nerd on this stuff and I'll be rolling those into my own elegant speed masks link in the description. But finally, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that is that when you work with these masks, they bring your system to its knees. And this is what I'm hearing from everybody. This is what I experience, even though I have a big system. And yes, the more masks you add, the worse it seems to get. And you may have noticed that every update that Lightroom comes out with, there's this note that's like, oh, we've improved speed of the develop module, and it's never actually true. Now, I do have a video here on the channel about optimizing and speeding up Lightroom, and I will put a link to that in the comments. But this is a huge problem in Lightroom. It seems to be a problem with AI masking in general, because actually, even in Capture One, when I start doing these elegant speed mask combos, it bogs it down as well. Yes, it's worse in Lightroom, but that might be at least in part because Lightroom has way more AI mask tools and options than Capture One does. I'm running like a 5950, 16 core processor, 3080 Ti graphics card, 128 gigs of RAM. I have a powerful system and it can't handle Lightroom AI masks. And this makes no sense because if you go into Photoshop, you can stack up 20 layers with masks and adjustments and smart layers, no problem. And it works 
perfectly smooth. Why can't they get this right in Lightroom? But the workaround at this point is what I showed you. Do not try building all these masks individually, especially even more so now. The more masks Lightroom gets, the more time it takes not only to set up all the masks individually, but then your whole system's gonna be bogging down and it's gonna be frustrating. You need to be making speed masks. Save all your masks or use a system like I create. I put a lot of hours into refining elegance, then apply them at the end of your edits. That's right. Do your presets, your develop. I put my film presets, all that stuff comes first because the moment you add all these AI masks, even flipping through the develop module gets way slower. I know that sucks. I know there's no excuse and we should be holding Adobe to account on this. People are paying a lot of money, but I'm speaking practically for those that are working and editing today. There's no other software tools that are giving us this kind of power. And the problem is Adobe knows that they're ahead of the competition. And so they can kind of get away with charging more and optimizing less, but that needs to change. Hopefully we'll see Capture One do more catch up so that Lightroom has to pick up the ball a little more. In the meantime, these are amazing tools. The way you can combine all these masks together now is really great. Just put them on at the end, make sure you do them in a speed mask combo so you can dump them all on at once. And that way you can dump this onto 100 images and then go get a snack and just let it crunch away. These solutions for speed are not the most elegant and hopefully we'll see speed improving on these very intensive processes. Because admittedly, yes, Adobe needs to optimize, but also this is pretty crazy stuff that this system is doing to these images. In the past, we would have had to do this individually on every image, masking, selecting, all of this stuff. Yes, there's still a reason to take the best images into Photoshop because you can always get a little more glory out of them. But for doing your raw and your batch edits, absolutely, this is the way to go. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit that like, subscribe button, and well, let me know if you have any questions. Peace out.